So we, the human race, have been blowing billions of tons of carbon dioxide, perhaps trillions of tons of carbon, into the atmosphere since the Industrial Revolution, you know, for the last roughly 200, 250 years. And can we, can we pull it out? Can a trillion tons of excess CO2 be removed from our atmosphere? Uh, there's a fascinating new book out by Peter Fikowski. It's, it's titled Climate Restoration, The Only Future That Will Sustain the Human Race. And uh, Peter Fikowski, F-I-E-K-O-W-S-K-Y.com is his website, and P. Fikowski is his Twitter handle. And Peter is on the line with us. Peter, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. It's great to be here. Thank you. Uh, back at you. Glad to have you with us. So tell us what you know, I, 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 when when uh, uh, Lila Connors and and uh, and 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 friends were uh, making this movie uh, Ice on Fire that Leo DiCaprio put together, we went to Germany together and we were in Norway together. But in Germany, we visited one of these uh, giant experimental projects where they were extracting carbon uh, from the air and turning it into stone. The problem was that it it, it took a whole lot more carbon to get the carbon out. I mean, you know, the, 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 just the energy ratio was all wrong. We'd, we'd burn, you know, thousands of, of uh, well, I, I, I don't know the numbers, actually, but you know what I'm saying. So, I know what you're saying, yeah. So, so how do we do this? How do we, how do we actually extract carbon dioxide from the atmosphere in a way that is, is net carbon neutral? Well, you know, the really, you know, what's negative, fun right. about this, I love having written the book and talking about it because it's very good news. What's new about it is that if you set the goal of restoring the climate, the methods for doing it start jumping out at you. And so we have, you know, the first question is like, well, wait a minute, if it's that easy, why haven't we been doing it before? And the answer is we, our goal was to reduce emissions. Uh, which was was fine in 1970. Today, our goal has to be to restore the climate. Now, to restore to get the trillion tons out, uh, we're going to end up doing the same thing that nature does. Uh, you and your listeners know that um, we have ice ages periodically on our planet, and that nature takes out a trillion tons of CO2 before each ice eats ah, before each ice age, and so we can do the same thing, and. Uh, then that, that's one method I'll tell you about. And then a second method is over hundreds of millions of years, our planet saves, uh, sequesters all of our carbon, almost all of it is limestone. 99% is limestone on the bottom of the ocean, which is old uh, seashells and so on. Mm -hmm. And so, we can also duplicate that and do that very rapidly. Okay, so and how do we so, do this, Peter? Um, go ahead. So how do we do this? So how do we do this? Well, um, if we do the the sort of the ice age thing, which is the the fast way, then um, it, it, <clears throat> nature stores the the carbon in the ocean. If you think about ocean as um, blue, that's beautiful, but it's not green. Green is when you have algae and you have photosynthesis happening. And the difference between blue ocean and green ocean, and most of the ocean is a little bit of iron. It's a, it's a critical nutrient required in incredibly small amounts. And in, normally it, it gets blown in as dust. Now occasionally it used to be that whales would pull it up from the bottom, but we killed off 95% of the whales. And so uh, our ocean has been turning bluer and bluer and we've been sequestering less and less uh, CO2. And so uh, we can, uh, it's been demonstrated that we can spread uh, du uh, dust, much as a volcano spreads dust with iron or a dust storm from, um, from the Sahara. And that dust provides the iron and then sequesters a lot of CO2. And um, now, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I, remember, I remember reading about this. 30 years ago, you know, the idea that we could we could spray very, very tiny iron filings, essentially, or, uh, you know, at almost a molecular level, particles of iron. Uh, yeah, just you know, iron dust. Yeah. Right, yeah, across the ocean, and, you know, it would it would provide food for plants, and those plants would extract carbon from, from the water um, that had been absorbed from the air, and that, yeah. water, and that carbon would become the body of the plants, and then over time, those plants would die and settle to the bottom of the ocean, or they would become food for... Uh, animals that sequester that carbon in their shells, as you pointed out, and become ultimately limestone. 
but my understanding was that the early experiments on that were pretty ambiguous about whether you know it could be done or if it could even be done at scale. Uh, is, yes. Has something new happened I'm unaware of? Uh, nothing terribly new. The main issue, that the problem wasn't the science, the problem was the politics. And the huh. UN has been telling us that we have to reduce emissions. And so politically, the, the organizations which were demonstrating this, um, they call it the, the, uh, the iron hypothesis um, or iron fertilization, the, the groups that were doing it were pushed back by the environmentalists who said, listen, the UN tells us we need to reduce emissions. If we reduce CO2 levels as much as you're saying, we're not going to be able to motivate people to stop driving cars. Right. So you've got to stop pulling the CO2 out. And so... Which actually the, makes sense. I mean, you know, if, if you're hitting no, yourself well, in the head with a hammer, you stop hitting yourself with a hammer before you take the aspirin. Yeah, yeah, well, uh, look at politics. Politics, unfortunately, doesn't work that way. It became a political issue, right. not a not a scientific issue. Right. And you know, and so what what I've done here is saying that really this is about the survival and flourishing of humanity, and said it. You know, and once you accept that we need to do it, then you say, how do we do it? Um, Ten years ago, a test was done in the Gulf of Alaska, and um, uh, they demonstrated that. Of, they grew a phenomenal amount of plankton and algae and a lot of fish. Um, there's very good evidence they got a lot of CO2 out. Um, you know, the evidence said it was almost 100 million tons in that one test with about 70 tons of iron dust. Wow. Yeah. And I, I and, was. And, you no, know, I, and no, no externalities, no negative consequences. No, no, no. Uh, very positive. The, the, uh, it's like fertilizing seven, a garden, basically. Exactly. Yeah. The, the salmon harvest in Alaska the following year was four times what it had been. Huh. Um, the, so why have they not, why aren't they doing this every year? Why hasn't this grown? Well, uh, it, the politics scared everybody off and uh, a number of us have been promoting it the last few years. And it looks like, you know, there is an academic group that's beginning to uh plan and search for money to do academic testing. And there are at least one uh, commercial group, the one that did the, the uh, work in Alaska. Right. They're also uh, working the to- The scale though here, Peter, is, is, I mean, you know, the oceans are massive. I mean, it's, you know, there's far more ocean surface on the planet than there is land. And, yes. and uh, you know, if you're gonna dig up, you know, tons and tons of, iron ore and, and refine out of that the iron, and obviously that's gonna produce a lot of CO2 just in that process, and then transport it and then grind it, you know, pulverize it and then transport it to an ocean and then dump it on the ocean. You know, I could see, you know, a thousand airplanes a day pouring stuff on the ocean and not even making a dent in, well, you know, when we're talking about billions or hundreds of billions of tons of carbon. Or am I, am I missing something? Yeah, yeah. The, the amount of iron is a, about a millionth of a part per million or a few millionths of a part per million. So it's a phenomenally small amount of iron. Hmm. Um, the, the, the story is that in 1990, the scientists who finally figured it, figured it out, and it was very hard to figure out because the amount of iron is so low that it, was, it wasn't until the late 80s they could even measure such a small amount. Anyway, so he went to a, 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 a meeting and he said, listen, if you give me half a tanker of iron, I'll give you the next ice age. And everyone sort of shook in their, in their seats saying, thinking, oh my God, that probably is true. That it, it's that, that really? uh, concentrated. Wow. And so uh, it, you know, uh, I, I was listening, I was on a meeting with the academics yesterday and they were saying, well, you know, probably two 747s could do the whole thing. Wow, that's, the, the, I'm, I'm skeptical, but that's mind boggling. We're talking with Peter Fikowski. He's got a new book out. It's called Climate Restoration, The Only Future That Will Sustain the Human Race. Peter, I'm gonna hit a break here in a minute. And, um, uh, but so very quickly, what other ways can we restore the climate besides uh, fertilizing our ocean? Yeah, so, so the other really great way is synthetic limestone. So if you think of an oyster and with its shell, it's very low energy. There's a company here in, in uh, California which makes synthetic limestone. So it does the same process that- You mean that they're pulling oyster. the carbon out of the atmosphere to make the limestone? 
Right, right. And then we had it's a trillion dollar market and uh, for the for the rock. And we is use that, that through a catalytic process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Uh, yeah, just just like an oyster. I mean, similar, but it's different. Right. But it, but again, uh, it was never needed before, and so they, the developer of it, said, you know what? This is the best way, second to ocean fertilization. This is the best way to get a lot of carbon out of the atmosphere. So there are strategies to restore our climate, and uh, the book is uh, by F Peter Fikowski, F I E K O W S K Y, titled "Climate Restoration: The Only Future That Will Sustain the Human Race." Peter, thanks for dropping by today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for talking. This My pleasure. Great. My pleasure. You, okay. Your book deserves a, a wider audience. Thank you. Thank you.